Hey guys, welcome to the 10 at 10 for May 28th of 2024. Hey guys, I'm Tim. Smash that like button. We're putting 10 new trees on the website, actually 20. So check out that email. Guys, I'm Matt. Today you're gonna be smitten with the snow kitten. We're bringing them back today. A lot of people were begging for it. So we saved you a few from open house for you online fans. We're not leaving you guys out. They will go quickly. We're gonna bring them back snow kitten to the 10 at 10 today, guys. And we got a great price on these Welsh pot one gallons. Yeah, these are high grafted at about a foot high, but these things have some killer variegation on it. I mean, check out the variegation on that. It's just got some of the best variegation of any of the Makawa types. Extremely bright, extremely white, I mean, for a variegated Makawi Etabusa, I love this thing. Yeah, beautiful plants. You guys have seen this one. Now, people ask why we do them on the high graphs. That's because Talon Buckholz loves them that way. He finds they have better color with the airflow, the better growth with the airflow. A lot of people have been really bragging on Brian Rule's snow kitten that's on his front porch. Guys, it's a high graph from the Buckholz farm, just like these. These are younger than that one, but this is exactly the format to get that same color. Heavy shade, uh, high graph like this, good airflow around it. Absolutely great way to be growing snow kitten. Now this is the same plant, plant as Yukiyama or Yama Yuki or Elmer or any of those other names that are out there. We find snow kitten to be the original, so we do stick with that. So give us some credit for that NJ Acer. We like to stick with the original name. Uh, you'll absolutely love snow kitten. Now we did have a good size set of these today, but guys, they will go fast. Um, grab you one today. Enough said about snow kitten. Guys, next up, we've got some one gallons of Acer Shira Solomon Green Snowflake. Ah, another classic Talon Buckholz introduction. I hope all of you had a fun time meeting Talon Buckholz uh, on Memorial Day. Uh, it was a big honor to have him there. Guys, Green Snowflake is a Acer Shira Solomon X Palmatum. It's got a lot of qualities of an Acer Palmatum Dissectum, so a lace leaf style with a more Shira Solomon style influence. Yeah, it's one of the first of those lace leaf Shira Solomons. And that's the thing that's really unique about this. I mean, this thing has this nice, graceful weeping habit to it. And if you look at the leaves, you can actually see that full moon kind of genes being expressed in this lace leaf. It's a little bit fuller, a little bit denser on the actual uh, leaf morphology itself. This is one of the coolest introductions. Give us some protection from the hot afternoon sun, but this thing just rocks it out in the garden. Great yellows to oranges in the fall. I love its overall texture. Uh, slow growing. I do tend to stake this one up at first if you want to get some height to it, then kind of let it weep down from there. Really great plant. Grab you a snowflake today on the 10 at 10. Guys, check out this Scarlet Princess. Uh, we've got high grafts and we've got low grafts. Scarlet Princess was found as a witch's broom by our good friends Tom and Nancy Ash. And it was a witch's broom on the cultivar Crimson Queen. And because of that, you get this tighter, denser Crimson Queen. Now guys, we've had these in heavy shade, so they're a little greener than they will be in your landscape, even just in heavy shade right now. These things leaf out a crazy pinkish red. I love that it's a witch's broom on Crimson Queen, but the colors honestly are a little bit different than Crimson Queen. The tree tends to have an upright arching habit than weeping down from there. So you get a lot of upright branching that's really weird and unique, giving it a very uh, different characteristic for a weep and lace leaf. Now this is a great tree for a patio planter or a pot. I mentioned this a lot, but a blue container looks like really nice with this one. Get you some yellow sedum. You've got the pink reds of the Scarlet Princess, the blue of the container, and kind of some chartreuse sedums. You could have so much color contrast going on within this. Now, whether you like a high graft or a low graft, this one's grafted about here. So a lower start to that, you're going to get a lot of that upward branching from the very base. One of the benefits to a high graft, you can plant hooker or hosta or things like that around it, and they won't be crowding it out when it's young. So great, great aspect to that as well. Whichever you like, grab one today on the 10 at 10. Yeah, I got a new appreciation for Scarlet Princess on our last trip to Talon Buckholz's home. We saw a specimen on the ground there, and I was just like, man, that thing is beautiful. We saw it in perfect spring color, and it's got this dense weeping habit that sort of arches upwards, but then sort of weeps, and it's, it's, it's crazy, and it's awesome. It's a witch's broom on a lace leaf. Still great electric pink fall color for it, just like Crimson Queen. Whoop! All right, guys, we got Seki Mori. It is a lace leaf extravaganza today. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a big announcement. About midway through, we're gonna hit you with a new surprise here at Mr. Maple. Guys, Acer Palmatum Dissectum Seki Mori. J.D. Vertree says this is his favorite fall color of a lace leaf. It's, he says probably the best weeping green lace leaf of any, having that golden yellow to orange fall color. I love the semi-arching habit it has, low and wide with Acer Palmatum Dissectum Seki Mori. Seki Mori was one of the first lace leaves that we started growing 
here at Mr. Maple. It's one of the very first green lace leafs. We fell in love with this thing. And it's just awesome because it's unique arching habit. They've got a gorgeous specimen of this at Serapy Duke Gardens uh, in Durham at Duke University. And it is just outstanding. It's one of those plants that I, that I truly love. It's arching habit really makes a beautiful specimen, especially as it ages. Guys, I love this one. Again, these are high grafts. They're grafted about right here. So you can uh, get them in the landscape, let them weep down from there. You can either stake up growth from there or just let it go. Uh, again, perfect candidates for container garden. This one is durable in sun or shade up to zone eight, typically zones five through nine on these. Give them some protection in the hot afternoon in zone nine. But this one has performed exceptionally well for us in Columbia, South Carolina in high heat conditions. Love that green. One of the better things about green lace leaves too, they don't change color in heavy shade. So they're not gonna green up on you in heavy shade. They're already a green. You're gonna keep that lovely green shade to chartreuse green into the summer, even in a dense shade canopy, and you still get great fall color. So you get, you get kind of everything you're looking for out of a green lace leaf in a shady spot too. Well, many people often take that lace leaf and put it right in front of their house, and they often put a red lace leaf. And if they have a dark colored lace leaf, then the lace leaf gets lost. The green lace leaf like Sekimori will really make a dynamic splay there, especially if you've got a brown or a darker colored house. It's going to show up more dramatically than a red lace leaf would. I hate when people put stuff right in front of something and it gets lost. You know, that's hard. All right, y'all, we are bringing back Arakawa. Now, Arakawa is going to sell out fast today. It's also one of the quickest ones to bark up. Don't be barking up my tree, y'all. This is an awesome plant. I absolutely love the older appeal of this. You get that bark interest that makes it look kind of ancient. You get that feel of being in a garden that's been around for hundreds of years because that bark kind of just gives it a, a really regal overall older look. Arakawa though, is super underrated for fall color. I love this one in the fall. Of course, it's a green in the spring and summer, but fall colors can go, I've had it be almost purple, orange, just continually changing colors, bright yellows and orange, typically ordained with a little bit of red to purple. Now, people often ask, what's the difference between Arakawa and Nishikigawa? Nishikigawa, that's the pine bark Japanese maple. Arakawa is often referred to as the rough bark because it actually gets deeper fissures in the bark itself as it ages. Uh, sometimes people call it an alligator bark because it looks almost like alligator skin on the bark. It just gives that aged appearance. Excellent for bonsai. Put one of these in the ground, make all your bonsai material from it. These are going to work zones five through nine. Through nine. They are low graphs. Again, great for bonsai content. I recommend bonsai people to get grafted material, plant it, then air layer and do rooted cuttings from that. You're gonna get so much more content from that. And uh, in the ground, a graft is by far the premium way to be growing a Japanese maple. So great way to get them, get them out, let them make a great looking tree, and then make all the content you want, y'all. Here you go, brother. Thank you. Now, one of Talon Buckles' newest introductions from what Matt and I have coined the new ghost is black hole black hole is really cool you can pair this with nebula we can get a whole celestial series going i love black hole it's dwarf it's dense it's multi-stemmed and it's really dark again these have been coming out of some heavy shades so they're a little greener than they will be in the landscape but these get some incredible shades some of the darkest of that reticulated purple ghost style but black hole tends to be very dense and full as well one of the reasons i love this tree is because it has that dark foliage but you can actually still see the reticulated veins in it. And it just draws you in because you've got those deep green veins in there on that dark foliage. Great plant, good for the container. Uh, again, a fun one to play around with a little bit. Uh, I think it's really nice as far as those new ghosts. This pairs exceptionally well with one we've had on there recently, which is Miss Maple and Blonde Beauty. I think both those are really fun pairings with Black Hole. Uh, again, Nebula fits perfectly with this as well. Really a fun pairing of what that reticulated style Japanese maple can bring to the table. And uh, I think that denser canopy does lend them very well to container garden as well. So it's another great one for a pot. Let's so make sure you got good drainage. All right, y'all, breaking news. We now ship some 10 gallon containers. We've got a new box that can fit up to this size Japanese maple in it. We've got some great shipping rates. Guys, we're gonna be shipping y'all out some 10 gallon Acer Palmatum Shishigashira Today, we've already been testing these and they've worked great all the way to California. Grab you a giant shishigashira today. You're familiar with this one. It's the lion's head Japanese maple. Great fall colors, great durability, and guys, great sizes. If we talk about a classic Japanese maple, this is a tree from the 1700s. It's on one of the oldest lists of Japanese maples ever recorded. Guys, this is an awesome tree that stood the test of time. It gives a unique texture out there in the landscape with its tight, dense, curled up foliage and it's tight dense habit. 
It just makes a beauty out there and contrasts well with everything. They make a great screen for your neighbor, and I'm gonna click us into a new one. Guys, check out this Rhode Island Red. Some amazing size 10 gallons shipping today on the 10 at 10. Guys, this size tree, it's only 275 before shipping. There's some incredible deals on these. This looks like the Rhode Island Red I first saw at Ed Shins and fell in love with in the container. You can start out with an absolute beast here for your garden. Yeah, this is one of the coolest dwarf red selections because it gives you everything people look for in a dwarf blood good <laughs> Japanese maple. It doesn't have to be sheared back. It makes this nice, it makes this really nice shape. It's all, nice. It makes this really nice shape all by itself. Dense, compact, fits excellent in containers or small places in the landscape and garden. That Rhode Island Red's real nice. <laughs> Guys, this has a bold pink red fall color. Beautiful overall tree. Again, a little greener because we've had them in some shade in here in the greenhouses. Get this one out. Let it do its thing. You saw these in the red maple reel when we toured the Dallas Arboretum. There were some beautiful specimens down there showing you exactly what Rhode Island Red can do. It's the closest thing to a true dwarf blood good. Grab you one today. We're shipping some big ones while supplies last. All right, guys, we're back. We got big moon rise. These things are huge, y'all. Uh, I was posting about this last week on Instagram. Shout out to the impatient gardener. She reshared some stuff about moon rise since I was talking about it. Guys, these sizes are so big in our tins. This moonrise is already covered in seed. These are huge plants. We're selling this size, three gallon, or 10 gallons, for $300. I love moonrise. It's one of my favorite Shira Solomons. Brian Rule's all-time favorite Japanese maple. You get these apricots. You get these pinks. You get all this glow and color over this golden yellow background. It is a showstopper for the garden. Yeah, shout out to Carl Munn, who found and introduced this tree. I mean, moonrise is an Acer Shira Solomon that's extremely heat tolerant. It's easy to grow out there in the garden, but it also just gives you so much color contrast on itself and out there with everything else in the garden. The larger full moon leaves on this are just outstanding and really give a good texture out there in the garden. Absolutely love this plant. Oranges to reds in the fall, typically a really bold orange. Guys, it tends to be a teardrop shape as it fills out. These are already doing that. Big mature sizes here, great looking 10 gallons. Again, we've been testing this new 10 gallon box. We've already shipped to California several times successfully, guys. Grab you one today. They're a steal of a size. And we're back with Purple Ghost. Yeah, these things are giants. They can actually bend a little bit to fit into our XL shipping box. Guys, Purple Ghost, it's one of my favorite of the Ghost series. It is the most purple Japanese maple that's out there. We've had the other two on a crate. This isn't on a crate at all. This is just the size of the 10 gallon. Uh, I'm 6'2", guys. Some big sizes going out here today. Absolutely phenomenal plant. You know all about Purple Ghost if you watch our channel. Talon Buckholtz classic. The first ever tree he actually found of the Ghost series. First Ghost was the first named. Purple Ghost was the first one he found. It's there in the original gardens at Buckholtz Nursery. Make sure to go check out our video where we show you a close up of the original. It's hard to beat it, especially at these great sizes. It's got a chocolatey colored bark, bright fuchsia red fall color too, bold reds. Love this plant. You can get some outrageous shades on this. You know, we often talk about blue Japanese maples not being real, but Purple Ghost can absolutely bring it. Yeah, and it can give you fuchsia purple to lavender purple, just depending on the year. Uh, the reticulation on this is quite nice as well. It's got a strong upright form. It makes a beautiful tree out in the landscape. Now, Purple Ghost has a strong upright habit. It makes a beautiful tree out in the garden. And this is just an awesome selection. It was actually the very first ghost selected, not the first ghost named, but it was the very first of the Ghost series selected. It's, it's an awesome tree. And these got some huge sizes right now. Yeah, Talon actually named First Ghost when he saw that one inspired the Ghost series. This one actually predates it. It was in the block there in like 92 or 93. And it's been around even longer than First Ghost. It's a cool tree. It, it's everything you want in a Japanese maple. It's helped move, move maples forward and like kind of show what they can be. But guys, some great size 10 gallons. If you've ever wanted to get a big one from us, now's your chance. Guys, make sure you check out Fast Today. Many of these trees will sell out very quickly. We really appreciate y'all jumping in. We appreciate everybody coming to the open house. We've had a blast. It's always great to see everybody at the open houses, talk trees, and having Talon Buckholtz present, that was sort of where our highlight of, to me, almost the year. Yeah, it's hard to beat that. We're gonna keep trying to up it. If you guys love that kind of thing, we may be having future speakers at our open houses. Uh, we always like to make these events as big as possible. You know, stay tuned for our next one. It's going to be a while before the next one, so I hope you're there at Memorial Day. Guys, we absolutely love shipping you quality trees, and we're always trying to up the game. Check out some of these new tins. I'll be today on the 10 at 10. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.